All right, this is the Friday practice before the Team MDUSA Open um, with uh, the Pendley Vision on Jared Fleming. Yes. This is the all day practice. Um, well, well, it's all not all day, but we do a morning session and then an evening session, um, both in the same recording. So right now we're looking at what Jared did in the morning. Yeah, so all these little clips right here is him holding the bar the whole time, but I just had to cut it down because it was so long. It spends a long time warming up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's actually Holly Mangold shirt right there. Not that that's an important detail. Nonetheless, it's a cool detail. That's why it's too big for you. That's, yeah, slightly big. It's a three X. So I grabbed it and I was like, wow, it was a two, I have a two XL shirt. And I looked at it I'm like, okay, it's a three XL shirt. It's got to be Holly. Well, you, you must be a little bit overweight. Yeah, I know. I do feel it out pretty good. I've been doing my bench presses lately. <laughs> All right, so here he is, uh, just with 40 kilos. So pretty much you just get to see his whole warm up. Uh, it's give you a little bit of different perspective. I think that for some people that's going to be useful because I mean, I think there's probably a lot of people that wonder how does a lifter like James Tatum or Jared Fleming warm up. Uh, this is how he does. Yeah, and the interesting thing is that me and Jared warm up totally different yeah and so this this exercise I'm doing here this is a no hook snatch so typically if I was doing you know regular snatches I would probably take you know a little bit bigger jumps but uh, I was doing these with Trav and, uh, and James so the a lot of warm-up weights because you know with no hook you're not going as heavy yeah so you actually did move your feet didn't you and because most people do the no hook no foot movement why didn't you why do you move your feet when doing that exercise? Yeah, so I like the exercise because it makes me uh, makes me move fast and not pull too long on the bar. Um, but I like to I like to move my feet because sometimes I don't move my feet enough when I'm when I'm lifting they get kind of stuck. Um, so I don't want to practice not moving them when I need to make sure that I, I move them. You know. Yeah. So it's just a little interesting twist that you take an exercise and make it more, uh, you know, more personal. Right. Right. Exactly. You don't have to always do exactly what the exercise is. And I think that's a good idea for somebody that has trouble from moving their feet. It's a good idea to move your feet even on this exercise. I mean, you don't want to practice bad habits you already have. Absolutely, absolutely. What do we got here? One, uh, 110. I ended up working. I got to go up to 130, do four singles. James, uh, James Travis and I was sandwiched together. James did a few sets at 130 with hook grip. Yeah, and then, uh, you know, the usual, he, uh, he snatched him without hook grip, and I'm with hook grip. Uh, I would like to say that I did beat him in the morning session. Snatched 135. Oh, yeah, that's true. But I used a hook grip, so it doesn't really count. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, those look pretty good for a no hook grip snatch. You, your, uh, your grip is pretty good. What is your best, 140? Yeah, I've done 140 now. Uh, before I started doing all my pulls and things without, uh, Mac. <laughs> so uh, this is the break in between uh, morning and afternoon session. I put that in there because I assumed hilarious. you would have taken a nap. Yes. <laughs> Similar I, yeah. to what Mac was doing what right Mac's there. Doing there. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah. So now I'm doing regular snatches here uh, with the hook grip. Yeah, I, I usually like to start. And there with... was what about a two-hour break in between those two workouts? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. Sounds about right. I actually kind of enjoyed training in the warehouse this this weekend. It was kind of nice. It was just a change of pace, you know. Sometimes it just gets old training in the same. Well, especially so. at this time of year, it's cool out. You know, it's the best time to train at like a uh, you know in, in a garage type place. Uh, during the summer, though, it gets uh, it gets rough. Yeah, that warehouse wouldn't have been fun in the summer. Where it gets hot. Yeah, up to ninety already. Now we're moving. You know, the, the morning workout was cut just a little short because the meet was this weekend. So it was a little less work than he normally does in the morning workout. But this afternoon workout actually went pretty well. He did some good, good work in here. Yeah, I'm still kind of rusty on my snatches and cleans. We've been really focusing on a lot of strength work. 
um, as of late, just squats and pulls and stuff. So I ended up missing a few of the little bit heavier snatches here. Um, just not quite there. Unless you cut them out. Oh, not these ones. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, you just, uh, I mean, it's not the weight. The bar is plenty high. You're just kind of putting it in the wrong spot. You're just not used to it yet. You know, you got to get got to relearn how to lift a weight after you haven't done it in a while. Kind of iron out the kinks, you know. I really don't think Jared's going to have any problems with like 50 or 60 um, once he gets back into it. Like like you said, the thing that's been killing him, I think, is the deadlifts. We've been doing deadlifts, and we're about, about to be done with those. But I think that just takes so much out of him. It really does. It's hard to recover from deadlifting and yeah. pulls. You know, on the heavy deadlifts, to two heavy squats, which he's doing both right now, and we're pretty about ready to cut out the heavy, heavy deadlifts, and uh, I think the old freshen right up. On to 170 already. Yeah, I, I sometimes get impatient when he's snatching because it seems like it takes him forever to warm up. But when he starts playing a jerk, and he gets to it really quick. Yeah, the snatches are kind of... Oh, yeah, I forgot this video was in slow-mo. Yeah, it was... Uh... It's a good position. And speaking it of... It looks the... good. I mean, sometimes slow-mo looks terrible just because you can pick out all the faults, but that one looks pretty dang good. Yeah, I think something that Travis had mentioned about your technique, he said he watched the video of one of your older lifts from a long time ago, and... Uh compared to one now. And you used to keep your chest up and your knees out really wide just to like take the load off of your back. But now you can actually afford to get over the bar a little bit, which kind of puts you in a better leverage position to be able to snatch and clean more. Um, because of all this back work, all these deadlifts that you've been doing, you feel like that's made a big transfer? Oh yeah, totally, man. Absolutely. I mean, I there's no. I mean, this is 200 kilos. I mean, there was no way I would have been able to uh, do this for a set of five. Before. And that's that's your best set of five on the snatch grip deadlift so far, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it's helped tremendously, man. I mean, I used to push my knees so far out, and I think that's why my clean and jerk used to suffer so much compared to. Uh, oh no, this is 200. The last one must have been 190. But uh, I think. The reason my clean jerk suffered so much compared to my snatch, you know, even in the previous year or two before all this back work was because I couldn't push my knees out, you know. Um, I mean, with your hands closer and clean, you can't push your knees out. So I was forcing my yeah. back to hold the weight when it really couldn't, you know. This is uh, 230. 210? 220, I think. And then I went to 240, so yeah, it's 240. This is 240. I almost got pulled forward when I went to pick that one up. Yeah. It's the heaviest I've deadlifted, I think, in a long time. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually a fairly heavy deadlift. Three. Yeah. And I was going for five and make this fourth one, but I felt my low back starting around, so I decided it wasn't worth, you know, giving it a shot. So Yeah, that was yeah. smart. Yeah, you got to go, you know, position's more important than just getting the weight up. Look at those wonderful, pretty bars. Man, they're cheap right now, too. I yeah, they are. Too cheap. We should charge more. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we got these little fancy things, new Oso collars. Those are wonderful collars. I mean, it's been a while since I've said anything good about a collar, but holy cow, those those hold the weights on perfectly, which a lot of collars are getting pretty cheap, and they just don't really work very good. Yeah. Those Oso ones work great. Yeah, I like those a lot. A lot easier to use, too. The spring collars. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're classic, but they're a pain in the neck. Absolutely. Worth the money to buy some of those uh, Oso collars. Well, that was Jared's practice. Thanks for watching. Another, another uh, episode of Pendley Vision. Pendley Vision.